And it's, you, you watch the podcast. For what reason, I don't know. It doesn't matter, really. And what reward do you receive from it? Pictures of my yard with my dog shit in it. Look, at first it was, it was a big accomplishment. My dog's healthy. Look at what she's doing because I'm now feeding her freeze-dried dog food. Now it's getting old. I walk out every day and I say, Helen, damn, when does it end? The yard is full of that stuff. On that little turntable, the Doobie Brothers from uh, Living on the Fault Line, which I did for about a year, 1989, 90, San Francisco. Radio job out there for a cup of coffee, as we say. Doobie Brothers, they're from out there, San Jose, San Francisco area, mean a lot to me, love them. I'll never forget the argument that Bob Walton had, a buddy of mine who was the music director, and the music directors get calls from the people who represent the bands. Hey, you got to play our new song, you know, and they push them heavy. And he got into an argument with this guy, whoever he was on the phone. He says, are you kidding me? I'm not playing that new Doobie Brothers. I'll never forgive the Doobie Brothers for what they did when they added Michael McDonald. I'll never forgive them for that. Me personally, I love the Tom Johnston Doobies and I, I love the Michael McDonald Doobies. I love what Patrick Simmons sings. Love the Doobie Brothers, period. Brother and I, Nick, big Doobies fans. You know, I don't know how to explain the whole dog shit thing. I mean, I do that. And, and the one value I get out of it is that I know out of the millions and billions of video podcasts that are out there now, I can promise you I'm the only one who shows pictures of his dog shit in the yard. Unique. Let's go with that. Hey, look, have you ever, <laughs> is there anything in this world that makes everybody in the world happy when they see it? A box of donuts, a dozen donuts. There's not a person in the world who doesn't release all their cares and troubles of the world the second they see a box of donuts pop up, especially when it's a surprise. Just donuts make you happy, everyone. Nice maple, which is my favorite, and the sprinkles, fine, glazed. We've got an Ace Hardware here in town, which I love. There's nothing to do in this town, but there's an Ace Hardware. It keeps me busy. Walking around there, picking up some things, and I come across this. And you got to buy it just because of the name. I have no business in the world buying purple degreaser, but I will because of the name. I have no use for it, but... You know, I was at the pharmacy the other day picking up my regimen, right? It's down to three now. At one point in the last couple of years, I was up to eight, nine pills a day or something. I don't know. Down to like two or three now. And this old guy is standing in front of me and he walks up to the, pharmac the pharmacist at the, at the counter and he's picking up a prescription. He says, I want my slide in fill, please. I'm here to pick up my slide in fill. And he's giggling, laughing. And uh, what is he? <laughs> slide in fill. And the real prescription name is Sildenafil. And he thinks he's funny. Now I start laughing because he thinks he's funny when really he's just a moron. So that made my day. And let me tell you something that did not make my day. I went to cut the grass the other day and I fired up my uh, battery powered lawnmower. You gotta go battery, man. And I fired it up and I hear this clutching sound. It's like, what's it go? No, what's that? Never heard that before. And I lifted up the lawnmower and it's a, I got a gecko, gecko in there. I, I, to this, I am so bummed out about that. I mean, those guys take up residence in the housing of lawnmowers sometimes. A lot of things do. I think I told you one time that I, I'd found a red racer snake underneath the lawnmower and he got out free. Cool. Love snakes. I do. I, I, the, the, the image of, of injured animals just kills me. I can't take it. I mean, it'll, this will bum me out, this poor little gecko, the greatest little, cutest little guy in the world, you know? I mean, that'll bum me out for five days. And then the image will stick with me for life. I'm serious. 
my brother and I, we would play with those guys for a while. I remember one time I accidentally pulled the tail off of one of them and I was just in tears. And my mom came in and said, look, Blade, don't worry about it. That's a protection mechanism that these geckos have. It protects them against snakes. What? Protects them against snakes. The snakes grab their tail if they miss them and the tail comes off so the geckos can escape. And then tails grow back within two weeks. So don't worry about it. And I felt better. You know, but I, about the animals thing, I went to a circus. I think my grandmother took me to a circus when I was like nine or 10, right? And I've never been back to one since. I mean, I, I couldn't take it. Those animals, God, leave them alone. Well, who was it? It was Sigfield, Sigmund, Sig, Siegfried, and Roy, right? A couple of years ago. Uh, and they're these major performer entertainers of animals, circus kind of deal, right? And it was Roy. Uh, one day, one of his uh, tigers turned on him, you know, and and it was really bad. And he grabbed him by the neck all of a sudden one day and just, you know, dragged him from the platform to the backstage and was gnawing at him, eating him. And nobody could get him away from Roy or get him off Roy. And they finally did. I heard with a fire extinguisher, Psh you know, believe it or not, the guy recovered. Never did a circus again. He recovered, but believe me, he was not the same. You know, you got to imagine tigers everywhere are going, yeah, you know. I mean, put yourself on a tiger's place. I mean, a guy's been chasing you around with a whip for 10 years. You know, what would you do? A tiger finally snapped. All right, I've had enough. That's it. <laughs> Zoos. Can't do zoos either. Zoo out here is a joke. Dirt and dust and sand in the zoo. You know, in the summer, it's 109 degrees and people go. And the story is, you can't find any animals. You can't see them anywhere. Because it's 109 degrees, for God's sakes. You know, no, you can't see, no one can see the lions and the tigers because they're in their caves. Right? 109 degrees, you know, and fans are blowing. You can't see the elephants anywhere because they're hanging out behind the palm trees, you know, in the shade, trying to keep cool. Bears? No, you don't see bears there. No one's ever seen a bear at the zoo, and they've got them. You know, up north in Canada, they hibernate for the winter. Down here, they hibernate for the summer. Tell me when it's over. The only thing that you can see, I've heard, out here in the zoo, in Arizona in the summertime, are the camels. That's it. So I avoid the zoos anyway. Waste of money <laughs> if I were to go. Animals gotta be in their environs, man. You can, they're, they're in jail, they're in prison. I don't care how many great, you know, specialty settings and environments you give them, they're in jail. <laughs>